Well, as we've mentioned, this whole idea of the Pentateuch as a connected story is, is part of uh, my response here. Um, in Genesis, God elects a covenant people. He chooses Abraham and Sarah and is going to build a nation out of them. In the book of Exodus, he redeems a covenant people. In Leviticus, he constitutes them as his nation and they're defined by this covenant which will make them holy as God's people. So we move from election to redemption to holiness. Then the book of Numbers, testing in the desert. And the whole, I think, idea behind this book, at least for me, is God testing and then providing. Testing and providing. And it's part, again, of this connected story as we think about what God is doing with his people in those first five books of the Old Testament. And when you think about the book of Numbers, there's this issue of guidance. Who's going to direct us? How are we going to get to our destination of this land of the promise? And so there's that issue of guidance and direction. There's also the issue of leadership. Who's going to lead us? And we know there's even rebellion in this book. People uh, are, are uneasy about Moses and Aaron and Miriam. And they say, wait a minute, you've brought us out here to die. What kind of leadership is this? So the crisis of leadership is there. There's also food and water. Uh, I, I sometimes uh, ask our students in light of even contemporary advertising today, what can brown do for you? The desert is brown. There's no green out there for these people. Where's the water? Where's the food? Testing and providing. So God is going to step up. He's going to provide guidance. He's going to give a Jethro to lead and guide. He's going to provide this pillar of cloud and fire to guide his people. He's going to provide Moses and Miriam. There's leadership. There's also food and water. God will provide those staples that the people need. And so uh, testing and providing is, I think, part of God's economy. It builds faith in us. It somehow helps us respond to this God who is interested, who cares, and who can actually provide. He can meet our needs. And the Hebrews had to learn that as they uh, make that uh, desert track, as they, as they move across from this uh, land of Egypt through the Sinai Desert into what will become for them the land of the promise. Again, another provision for God, right? A destination, a, a piece of real estate again that they will travel to and eventually inhabit as part of God's work with them. So testing and providing, it's not only for the Hebrews, I think that that's part of life is even as we think about the life of the church today. God still tests, but thankfully, God still provides. And that's what we have great hope and encouragement in, right? That, that God provides when he tests.